and welcome to English 1010. This is an asynchronous online version of the course here at Prince George's Community College. This video is going to introduce you to the class and some of our basic policies. It's really important though that you go to the syllabus and make sure you understand all of the policies and all of the details. So let's get started. So as I said, this is an asynchronous online course. That means that we will not be having any live virtual sessions. My name is Dr. Dunick. I've been here at the college for quite a while. Um, you can always contact me by email. Um, I'm also available by phone. You can leave a message on my office phone, but the fastest way to get a response is by email. This semester, we'll have office hours through Zoom, Monday and Wednesday from 11 to 12 p.m. You can pop into the Zoom link that is posted on our Blackboard website, um, and then when it's your turn, you'll be admitted. The other way that you can talk to me in person is by appointment. I take appointments Monday through Friday, and I just need 24 hours notice in order to make an appointment for you. So this is the first in your two semester composition course. English 1010 is intended to help you get started with academic writing, to develop the skills you already have coming in from high school and previous work, and to give you a good familiarity with research and source integration. We have um, a set number of learning outcomes that we're gonna be focusing on this semester. And what this means is by the end of the semester, you should be able to do these things at a satisfactory level. So we're gonna be working on formulating thesis statements and writing thesis-driven or argument-driven essays. We're gonna be organizing your essays into traditional introduction, body, and conclusion paragraphs. We're really gonna work on writing those unified, coherent, and well-developed paragraphs with good topic sentences, um, evaluating library and online resources that are relevant to the specific topic we're working on. We're gonna synthesize multiple sources into an essay to support the thesis, integrate sources through summary, paraphrase, and direct quotation, and really importantly, we're gonna learn how to properly document sources through in-text citation and end-of-text bibliographic documentation. So it's quite a lot to get through this semester, but everything's gonna kind of build as we go. The textbook that we're using this semester is called They Say, I Say. It's the fifth edition of the textbook. For this semester's section of the course, you will be provided a free copy of the ebook and all of the digital resources for this textbook. So look for instructions in your email and through Blackboard about how to access your free textbook. So for this particular course, um, the grades are broken down, you can see on the screen here. So there's a couple different things that we're gonna be looking at. One of the important things to note is that everything in this course is kind of stacked and scaffolded. So the summary and analysis, or I'm sorry, the summary and the synthesis project are actually kind of a two-part project where you'll write a summary about one article and then you'll build on that summary into a synthesis. The same thing goes for the annotated bibliography and the argumentative research essay. You'll do an annotated bibliography of your sources, and then you'll turn that annotated bibliography into a research essay. In addition to our major, our five major projects, um, you'll be doing homework assignments routinely through the semester. You'll be doing a lot of worksheets where you show your active and engaged reading, answer comprehension questions and analysis questions. And then the other thing is you're required to do process work. So um, one of the main um, things that we're gonna talk about this semester is how writing is a process and the only way to get better or stronger at writing is to go through that process. So you'll be doing work on brainstorming, invention, drafting, organizing, revision for each of the documents. And then that work um, will kind of help you be more successful on the projects. So every single major assignment will come with a list of basic specifications. I call them minimum requirements. They're right on the instruction sheet. This makes it super easy for you to go through your final um, paper, your final project, like a checklist, and make sure that you have everything. Basically, students who meet all of the minimum requirements are guaranteed to be on that project. But missing minimum requirements could result in a lower grade, and we'll go through that this semester. As for homework and process assignment graded, grading, this is graded all pass fail. So if you do the work completely, you get a point. If you miss the work or turn in something incomplete, you don't get a point. Um, 
the goal of homework and process assignment grading and th those assignments is to help me see where you are in the process and give you feedback. Um, it's to help you kind of structure your week and your semester so that you're making progress on your big assignments. It's not intended to penalize you. So as long as you're doing the work, you get full credit. And then I'm going to drop your lowest to homework and process work score. So that means that twice a semester if you're having a rough week or a rough day and you need to skip something you're not going to be penalized for that other grading policies um, because we think about writing as a process revision is a really important part of that process anytime in the semester if you are unhappy with your score on a project you can ask for a revision opportunity as long as you ask within a week of getting your grade back um, you can work with me on a revision following the specified instructions I give you, and then that revision grade will replace the grade on the essay. Um, there are no revisions for homework and process work. Again, that's because that work is supposed to happen in the process of doing the project, so you can't really go back and do it after the fact. Here are some other policies that you should be aware of, especially regarding late work. As I said earlier, everything in the semester is scaffolded and structured. So if you're late on a project or you're late on some of the work that contributes to that project, it's gonna be really difficult to keep up. So late unit projects lose one letter grade per day late, up to five days late. Once you're five days late, it's a 50%. Um, but you know what, life happens, and especially in a pandemic, you could be um, faced with an emergency or some situation out of your control. If that happens, every student in the class gets one free life happens pass in case you can't get your project in on time. That's once a semester, um, you're having a rough week, something pops up, you can turn one project in up to 48 hours late without any grade penalty. But the other way that you can kind of help yourself this semester is extensions. Um, if you request an extension before the due date, and this is not like 10 minutes before the due date, but a day or so before the due date by email, I usually grant them. So if you're having a rough week, things are just kind of loaded up, you know you're gonna need a day or two more to get your project done in a way that you're really happy with, you should contact me and let me know. One thing to remember is that all requests have to be made before Friday at 4 p.m. You can't make a request for an extension over the weekend because I'm not monitoring my email over the weekend. Now there are some other policies in the syllabus, so you're really gonna to wanna to go to the syllabus and make sure that you understand all the different policies and procedures. Um, we'll go over them at different points of the class, but there's information about submission guidelines, technical difficulties, like what happens if you're trying to submit something and um, your computer doesn't work all of a sudden. If you have any sort of disability accommodations, you need to let me know about that. There's information there about plagiarism and the student code of conduct. So definitely review the different policies and then let me know if you have any other questions. So again, welcome to the class. I'm excited to get to know you all this semester. If you have any questions at all, please shoot me an email. Um, my email address is located in the syllabus. It's located about 100 other places in the class. Um, I'm always here to help, so don't be afraid to reach out. You're never bothering me. It's literally what I'm here for. So welcome to the class and welcome to spring 2022.